<laughs> what a good lad. That's really clever. Good boy. Right, this is Sam and uh, he's uh, five and a half years old and he's coming from a farm where he's actually been deemed a non-worker. Uh, he's lived outside and uh, although he's actually um, <laughs> a registered dog, he's a pedigree dog, um, he seems to not really have the kind of instinct for herding that is necessary for the sheep they have on the farm there. It's rather nice that he's been able to live quite a, a nice free life on the farm. There's not an ounce of fat on him, but he's a really big, strong dog. He weighs, I think, uh, 30 kilograms. That's obviously quite a lot of dog there, isn't it? So, so far then, he's been vaccinated and he's been frontlined for any fleas, ticks or lice and he's been wormed and he's completely clear. So what we have done is just a little bit of um, off-lead exercising in the paddock and uh, I've been calling him back to see how he's recalling and he's really only too pleased to come back to you, which is nice. <laughs> steady, steady, just steady. But <laughs> a very amiable thing, but uh, not a great deal of sense around the stock, it seems. But uh, that's not necessarily a problem. If he doesn't want to do that, we'll find something else for him to do. And we've done um, a bit of basic... Uh, lead work, just getting him used to being on a lead because he obviously has never been on a lead. So first of all we use a really long line so that he can still free uh, run around but uh, at least we can have some control over him uh, and then to call him back up and then I've been just starting to get him to walk behind for the first time which has been interesting isn't it? Anyway we'll put him back in his stable now and he's very clean as well isn't he? He always waits to go out which is nice. He's obviously been in a good routine and very well looked after. I think basically they're non-workers and um, they were possibly chasing the sheep when they should have been herding them. So um, he wasn't able to keep them anymore. So what he's done is he's um, allowed Border Collie Rescue to take them on and uh, we're now going to get them fully vaccinated and wormed and um, assessed them before they can go out for a new home. Right. But um, this is Mum and this is Nell and she seems like a really nice little dog. Uh, and uh, we also have her son, right, who is Bill. So um, I'm just going to... I think she's possibly a little on the plump side. So uh can't say he didn't feed them well. Oh, wow. Oh, Maybe she's possibly wow. the badger. <laughs> yeah. She's... <laughs> oh. But she's, uh, like her son, very, very nice temperament. And yeah. um, very sweet little thing. Yeah. So what we're going to do now is um, we'll make sure that they get wormed and they get some front line on them to cover yeah. any um, fleas, yeah. ticks or lice. Yeah. Uh, they've been used to being in straw, so um, we'll put them over in the quarantine area until they get their second vaccination and then a couple of days after that they can come out and um, join in with, with everybody else. And then we'll put them around the sheep and see what they really do. Obviously we'll keep them on a really long line first just to see how keen they really are. And then maybe we'll look at seeing what we can do. If we can get a stop command on them, uh, and they can do um, a little job for somebody, maybe somebody on a small holding might find them quite useful. Yeah. And if we can't, then we'll just put them in a nice secure environment where they can't harm any sheep. Right. And that's what we've got to be mostly uh, concerned about. If you want to take now, then I'll get uh, a <laughs> little, uh, little bill from the back. They may have had shares in the same dog food company. What do you reckon? I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, he said. They're obviously it used to being to together. Grooming. Yeah, I think they both could do with a yeah. bit of a, a shampoo and a groom. Goodness me, but, um, huge. <laughs> yeah. but the main thing is, what nice dogs. Yeah. The dogs Lots that haven't been um, handled very much recently yeah. and obviously not allowed to have a, a great deal of exercise. Yeah, they They're are. both really, really nice. Pleasant. Yeah. So anyway, we'll pop them over there now and uh, just see how they get on. So we'll walk them over to Bronze now. <laughs> 
My name is Chantal Dalo, I'm the Dog Warden for Hambleton District Council. There isn't a great deal of background with them being strays. Um, all I can repeat to you is what's been told to me by the lady who, who sort of phoned up and reported them, that they were left in or around a caravan site near Nathan, I think it was. Um, she didn't know what they would be like to sort of handle or, or, or let any of the, the other strangers get near them. So what she did is she sort of got a, a group of people um, caravanners to sort of approach them. I think four guys went over and approached them and they were absolutely fine with these strangers and then she got close enough to sort of put leads over them and sort of stake them out of the way because obviously there's people coming in and out and they decided, <coughs> excuse me, they decided to sit down and settle right in the, uh, the driveway. So uh, that was over the couple of weekends ago I think and um, and then I went and picked them up and they're in absolutely mint condition, definitely house dogs, because they're absolutely beautiful. It's a shame really. I mean, it's quite heartbreaking to think that someone's taken them on holiday and dumped them and driven back wherever it is they've come from. You know, it could have been Scotland, it could have been Ireland or wherever, you know, just a long distance and just dumped them. I mean, it's really horrible. How have they reacted to other dogs and when they've been out on the and what? Very well, actually. I think they're very well orientated towards other dogs. Um, they, they just seem to go up to other dogs and sniff through the, the cage, and that's all they do. Now, the short amount of time that I have spent with them, they've never barked aggressively or, or gone for anyone, and they've got quite a lot of pulling power, you know. If they wanted to, they could have me off my feet with no trouble, but there's no aggression there at all, which is why I think they're very well, uh, they've been very well orientated or socialised. Definitely got to be house dogs for that. Do you, do you find yourself getting that sort of... Oh yes, yes. <laughs> yes, I bite my tongue quite often, I'm surprised I've still got enough left in my head to speak with, but um, you can't change what certain people will do to animals, but the majority of people, 99.9% .9 of people, have got a good heart and they won't abuse another being, which is what they are, they're another being. They have as much right to life as any other animal. Um, and all we can do really is work to do the best that we can for the ones that have been in a bad situation, get them out of it as soon as possible and get them into a good life. Because as soon as they learn to trust us, that bond can be re-established. It's horrible when it's broken, it really is, but I try and reconcile my thoughts to that was only that one person and the dog's got a long life in front of it. If we can get them into a a situation where they're in a loving home, friendly environment, and they're socialised with lots of other people and lots of other dogs, then they'll have a happy life. And that's all we can work towards. Show the scars on your face Is a clue to the answer